in the name of Jesus, the judge of all, fellow believers in him, what was the setting of the gospel of the day, which I read from Matthew chapter 25? What was going on when Jesus spoke those words? Do you know? It was Tuesday of Holy Week. Every major group of his opponents verbally attacked him that day, and it dragged on from morning till evening in the temple courts. Pharisees, Sadducees, priests, scribes, experts in Israelite law, all were on the attack to make Jesus look foolish in front of the crowds. He's just three days away from hanging on that accursed tree on a hill northwest of the city. But as he is now speaking about sheep and goats in today's gospel, it's late, late Tuesday evening, and he is diagonally opposite from that northwest hill, southeast of the city on a long ridge with his close followers, and they are hanging on every word. He is at the end of his public ministry, at the end of his three years of teaching, at the end of his life. And as he is at the end, what does he teach about? The ultimate end of all things. What amazed his first followers and amazes us is that this same Jesus, who will soon be hanging on a cross, is God. And he was in charge then, as he is now, and will be forever. Which is very clear from the statement that he makes. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. He's going to be in charge. And then what? What happens? Jesus will be our judge. He will separate all humanity, demonstrate our sincerity, and seal our fate for all eternity. He will be our judge. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if the justices of the Supreme Court could gather all the citizens of the United States into one great big arena and then separate all the bad people from the good people, lock up the criminals, and let the rest and the innocent go free? It's not going to happen as you well know. For one thing, there is no arena in our nation big enough to hold all the citizens of the United States. And for another thing, criminals are too good at hiding. It would probably be too difficult to gather them in one spot. And on top of that, judges can't look into people's hearts. A judge might make wrong decisions in such a scenario and lock up innocent people, let guilty people go free. But on the last day, on Judgment Day, there will be perfect decisions made by the perfect judge. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Jesus has never made a mistake, never has and never will, and certainly not on Judgment Day. And he's not going to miss anyone. All people who have ever lived or who will ever live will be gathered by the holy angels before his throne. And then Jesus is going to separate all humanity. He's going to put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. He'll put those who are sinners, the goats, on his left, and he's going to put those who are not sinners, the sheep, on his right. Wait. If your brain is firing on at least a few cylinders right now, you probably have a question about the statement I just made. He's going to separate all humanity into two groups, sinners and non-sinners. Didn't we just confess 
a few minutes ago that we're all sinners? Uh Uh-oh, what does this mean? We're all going to end up on his left, judged to be goats, left there, hanging out to dry and eternally punished? Is that what's going to happen? Kind of like a wedding, where all the bride's relatives are on one side of the church and the groom doesn't have anybody on his side because he's from out of town? What's it going to look like? Keep in mind that when we talk about Judgment Day, there's another term we have for that. We call it Jesus' second coming. And then that makes some sense. If we talk about a second coming, there must have been a first coming. Do not ever lose sight of his first coming. When Jesus came into this world the first time, taking on human flesh, he did what is impossible for any human being. He paid for all of our sins and covered us with the fire of God's anger-proof tarp of his saving love. Everyone who is under the tarp of his forgiving blood will be considered not a sinner, will be considered sinless. In fact, the Bible says this, through the obedience of the one man, Jesus, the multitudes will be declared righteous. Sad to say, there will also be some people, as there are right now, people who shove aside that tarp of Jesus' protective, fireproof, protecting love, and they're going to get caught and exposed and burned by God's holy anger. Some time ago, I saw a television show in which the writers were trying to depict a near-death experience. They had a guy walking around in some kind of a desert sort of wilderness, and the people he meets tell him there are different names for this place, purgatory, limbo, but this is where we hang out until God finally makes a decision whether we end up in heaven or hell. Baloney. Not going to happen like that. When you die, you will already be judged. And your soul immediately will be with God in heaven. Those who are not believing in Jesus, who push the tarp of his forgiveness away, their soul immediately will be in hell. But at the end, on the last day, Jesus is going to make it all public. He's going to publicly affirm what he has done. He will be our judge and separate all humanity and make it obvious and public and affirm it for everyone to see. Cling to Jesus and you'll end up on his right when he separates all humanity. There was a little rural school in which the teachers decided that at the end of each school year they were going to award a most valuable student award. Everybody thought Susie was going to win it. Susie had the grades, she was captain of the cross-country team, she ran around and sort of was in charge of all the people in her school. But at the last day, the principal gathered all the students together and made the announcement. I suppose you all think that Susie's going to win the Most Valuable Student Award, but we have found out that she did not a little cheating and a lot of bragging, and the award is going to go to Joey. (gasps) Everybody was surprised, especially Joey. But then the principal said, I know it's a surprise, but he always faithfully handed in his assignments. He cared about the people in his class and in this school, didn't even pick on his little brother. Joey is the Most Valuable Student Award winner. The principal wouldn't have had to do it, but he publicly announced the reasons why Joey won the award. On the last day, there are going to be sinners before the throne of God who are going to look at the Lord and say, Lord Jesus, How come sinners like Pastor Hebner and all the people gathered for 9 o'clock worship on November 9, 2014 at Grace Church are on your right and we're stuck here on your left? That doesn't seem to match. They're sinners just like we are. And then Jesus is going to do something he wouldn't have to do. Something rather surprising. He's going to publicly demonstrate the sincerity of our faith. The king will say to those on his right, you did all kinds of nice things for me. No one's going to be more surprised than us. And we're going to say to him, Lord, when did we do all those nice things? And the king will reply, truly I tell you, 
Whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Being nice to people. Working faithfully. Being careful about what comes out of your mouth. Loving your family members and spouse and kids and respecting your parents and being nice to the people in your neighborhood and where you work. All, thing, all these things are good things that Christians do. Of course, you are Lutheran Christians and you understand that the good things we do do not earn us a spot with God. If that's how we're supposed to get in with God, we'd never make it because we could never do good things well enough. We'd always fall short. It's impossible to merit or earn a spot with God. But the good things we do serve a purpose. They serve to demonstrate the sincerity of our faith. Now, I know some people who are really wonderful, kind, and caring people. And they do all kinds of nice things for their friends and their neighbors. But on the last day, because they pushed away the fireproof tarp of Jesus' love, and their hearts are not under that tarp, their works will not be either. But all the good things that you and I do, tainted with sin, never perfect or good enough in God's sight, because our hearts are underneath the tarp of Jesus' love, our works will be too. Isn't it wonderful to know that we don't have to do anything to end up on Jesus' right when he separates all humanity. Cling to Jesus. He will be our judge. And then he's even going to surprise you and me and everyone else and demonstrate our sincerity for all to see. We get lots of reminders that our time on earth is limited. Gray hair, creaky knees, pulled muscles, broken bones, sore back, toys fall apart, machines break, computers lock up, and get viruses. Some days, we wonder if we're going to make it all the way through the day. We get plenty of reminders that our time on this earth is temporary. Jesus now gives us clear statements that our time in heaven will be permanent. When the holy angels gather all people who have ever or who will ever live before his holy throne, he's going to seal our fate for eternity. The king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Then he'll say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. And the unbelievers will go away to eternal punishment. But the righteous to eternal life, eternal life. Imagine a little kid tossed out of his house onto the street and from then on separated from parents and from siblings and from grandparents and relatives stuck all alone. Imagine the terror and the horror of being all alone. That's nothing compared to the horror of being separated from the Heavenly Father. And what happens in the American court system very often when a judge makes a decision? Not always, but very often the people who don't like it file an appeal and try to get that decision overturned. And that sometimes works. That won't happen on the last day. You will already be judged when you die. Your soul will be with Jesus in heaven. But on the last day, Jesus is going to demonstrate publicly not only the sincerity of your faith, but seal your fate for all eternity. Those who pushed aside the tarp of his forgiveness are going to have their bodies rejoining their soul and sealed in hell forever. No second chances. No other opportunities. No getting your hand stabbed to come back in line later on and try again. Not going to happen. But the same thing is true for us who are on Jesus' right, who are his believers, who are covered by the tarp of his forgiving love. Jesus isn't going to change his mind. He's not going to say, well, you died and your soul is with me, but now I'm kind of tired of you. No! He's going to seal our fate for eternity. Cling to Jesus when he separates all humanity and demonstrates the sincerity of your faith for all to see. He will guarantee and certify 
and seal your delightful fate with him for perfect joy that will never end. There are people who don't like to think about the business and this subject that the world in which we live is going to come to an end. But when they come to grips with it, there are people who try to predict when it's going to happen, which can't be done. There are others who try to run and hide as if they're going to be able to, to run away. That won't happen. And on the last day, I'm going to be there and so will you. And everything we can see and touch and that we have right now will be gone. And we'll stand there before the holy God. Scary or not? Is that going to be good or bad for you? Cling to Jesus. See him in the manger. See him changing water to wine to prove his power. See him healing sick people to prove that he cares and that he's the powerful saving God. See him dying on the cross for you. See him bursting out of that tomb to guarantee it's all true. Cling to Jesus. He makes all the difference. Judgment Day going to be good or bad, scary or not? It will be a delight. And because of Jesus, it's going to be the greatest celebration, not just of all time, but for all time. He will be our judge. Amen. And please stand.